les amis, hi guys, I would like to reiterate a word of warning that I had touched upon quite a while back, so I think it's going to be useful, especially now that quite a few of us have a bit of uh, extra cash coming out slowly out of uh, COVID, well, we're not quite out of the woods yet, and also because many of us are going to secondhand dealers for our purchases and many of us start considering more complicated and higher manufacturer type of pieces and you see those videos every day we talk a lot about those watches on the the live streams and then whatnot so today during lunchtime i met the watch gang simon ben and uh, and josh we went to see some uh, independent brand uh, models there's a a small dealer here who imports them so it was interesting to see something a bit different and uh, as we left already in my mind I was thinking that's great but this is really with fun money that you should buy that because if something goes wrong in a few years who's gonna fix some of these watches especially the ones which are using um, a brand new movement uh, not and, and not just a, a nice a, a common off-the-shelf movement uh, that they finish to high standards anyway uh, Simon says hey let's go to the local second-hand dealer that we we know well and if you remember a couple of weeks ago I talked about uh, Patek Philippe uh, 5270G uh, white gold so grand complication uh, chronograph perpetual calendar and uh, I was kind of seriously considering getting that, getting the grail, but that piece was already spoken for. And to my surprise, there was another one just like it, uh, just the one produced a couple of years later, but very much the same full set and everything. So I asked to see the watch. We sit down. Everything looks is quite good with the paper, uh, with the wrapping paper on top. So because I was Again, considering this, I asked to remove the wrapping paper. Then I decide to wind the watch a little bit. It's a manual wind, so usually manual winds, if you don't know, as soon as you wind them, a couple of turns, they should start. You know, you can do that with the moon watch, for example, uh, any of those, uh, those watches. While the um, automatic watches usually need maybe 12, 15 little turns of the crowns to uh, reanimate the movement. And so I turn 12, 15 times, nothing happens. Turn a bit more and, uh, and it's nice and crunchy, very beautifully uh, defined winding actually. Uh, one of the best I, I felt, really uh, discreet, nice little click. But the watch doesn't start, so I hand it over to the dealer. He tries to start it, he taps onto the watch. And we're talking about a hundred grand US type of watch. Taps on the watch tries to reanimate it nothing happens okay uh, so i told him let me know what your watchmaker uh thinks of it what he what is he gonna do and so we left and uh i was telling my friends you know this is something that we tend to forget but if you're gonna go with a complicated watch from uh, a great manufacturer like patek or Vacheron or AP or anything like that and you go to buy them in a second-hand shop most of those second-hand dealers are not gonna open the watch they're just they're gonna give you a warranty if in case something goes wrong but I just hope it some nothing is gonna go wrong they hope you're not gonna wear the watch too much so a watch like that produced 11 years ago looks very very clean barely worn you know micro scratches maybe but the strap is still in very good condition but you just don't know what happened to it you don't know why someone decided to to sell it and there you go it turns out it doesn't even start it doesn't even start it's not that it doesn't even run properly it doesn't even start when the first customer tries to uh, to, to have a go at it so what has that dealer and I'm going to keep his name anonymous, but maybe some of you in Hong Kong will guess who it is. So that dealer has really done no checking whatsoever. 
as he even tried to <laughs> to make the watch run once before being ready to sell you sell that to you for a hundred grand more than that more than that so imagine it runs actually it has happened to me with that dealer before i bought a watch after a week it stopped brought it back gave it he gave it to his watchmaker and it came back perfectly running really on the dot i can't complain about that but did it go to the manufacturer no it went to an independent watchmaker so you're very complicated very expensive uh, watch if you have a problem with it you bring it back to the to the dealer is he gonna take an expensive two three thousand dollar service from Patek Philippe of course not he's gonna have his watchmaker do the minimum the bare minimum to make the watch run and we're talking about a grand complication and he's basically treating it treating it like like a Seiko it uh, doesn't make any difference to him he just cares about the percentage he's gonna make on every watch so whether it's this one or another or another one he wants to make uh, a certain amount of uh, of money and when you bring back the watch he's losing he's starting to lose money so it definitely doesn't want to send the watch back to an authorized uh, watchmaker of, uh, of Patek Philippe certainly not to Patek Philippe or Vacheron the same thing had happened to me and that's when I talked about this subject before uh, when I tried a historic uh, chronograph from uh, Vacheron at a second-hand dealer I wind it wind it nothing happens nothing happened and uh, and i noticed that uh, the guy the dealer put the watch back on sale a bit later on at a higher price to cover his cost of fixing it but was it fixed by vacheron of course not uh, you know it's a lemania movement based okay uh, so maybe the winding mechanism is not complicated to watchmaker however given the price the value of those things do you really want to put so much money into a watch that hasn't been serviced properly in the proper channel now of course the reason why i'm interested in this watch is because the the price is asking reflects that to to an extent so it, it is kind of fair but you just have to to, to know these things because sometimes you know there's never any miracle uh, if the price is too good to be true there's always something uh, behind it so if the price there is uh, quite a bit below what you're going to find on Chrono 24 uh, there, there's, there's always a catch <coughs> and so the catch in this case is, um, is this that you probably are buying something that has not been serviced for a very long time and you have to factor in that uh, if you want to have peace of mind down the line if you want the watch to run up to spec if you don't want to run into a bigger problem you're gonna have to uh, eat up a service which is fine you know you buy a watch like that it's a watch for life and uh, every three four five years you're gonna have to uh, have it serviced and it's something that most people forget uh, these days and the, the cost of that service is the cost of a, of a nice diver for example so there you go this reminds me very much of those trashed, neglected, abandoned supercars bought with fast money, people who don't really have the money to keep the watch, keep the, the car in, a, in good condition. Those high-end cars, high-end watches need to be serviced properly. So when you consider buying second hand, you always buy the, the sellers and i've mentioned that yes the the watch box for example or is the prices tend to be higher than the rest of the the market however they give you a two-year warranty and i think many of the watches if not most of the most of them are properly serviced before they are sold so they stand by what they are selling that's the way you want to buy a, a high-end timepiece for life i think and it's closer to the service you get when you buy the watch brand new from the brand, when you get that contact with the manufacturer itself, and when you, you know the whole history of the watch. So nothing wrong, of course, with buying secondhand because those watches are meant 
to last a lifetime, but they have to be treated properly. And it's a bit of a chilling experience uh, when you see your the watch dealer, you know, just tapping on the watch on the grand complication, hoping it's gonna restart just by magic. So I hope this word of warning uh, is uh, useful to you. There's never any any miracle if the price is too good. There's always always a catch. Thanks for watching, guys. Share your comments below with everyone. Have you had the same sort of experience? Uh, is this word of warning useful to you? You know, sometimes maybe uh, buying a simple Rolex, bulletproof, which of course will need service at some point as well, uh, but usually uh, is a bit less, uh, is a bit more trouble-free. Uh, maybe that's not such a bad thing. As I often say. Before you buy one of those toys, you should have enough money to buy 10 of them. Worth the wise. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.